What is that? That is sick. We got that installed last weekend. I'll have to show you guys how that worked out because I need to have, and someone else needs to have a talk with Warren because some of their instructions are really kind of crazy, but all in all, it worked out. I've already used it. I'm really stoked about it. Hey, check that next video out and I'll show you how we did it. Hey YouTube family, welcome back to the channel. My name is Motors and this is my partially disassembled Jeep. Next, I wanted to uh, install a new bumper today with a winch and uh, my wife and I are out here uh, getting everything going. We got the bumper off, got the factory bumper off. You know, I've got the, the typical issues with getting the uh, fog light wire harness and everything out, but that wasn't too bad. Just a little patience and you can get that out fairly easily. But uh, I've searched all over the uh, instructions, of course, and uh, online, and nobody has really uh, got a video out there showing some of the frustrations that we're having uh, getting the uh, frame mount bolts installed. So I've got some ideas, but before I do that, I wanted just to show you what uh, we're up against here. All right, so here is the uh, worn stubby crawler bumper with bull bar. Uh, the winch will mount just on top of the bumper and it's got the uh, fog light cutouts. So let me show you uh, what's going on here. Okay, so on the back side of the bumper, you see we've got uh, two bolt shape holes, which will help you get those bolts in there. And then the top two are rectangular. But of course, on the other side, I've got three started. The bottom two, of course, was super easy, except for the fact you have to find something to wedge behind that uh, enclosure there to hold the bolt while you push that retaining washer on. And looking at the instructions, I don't know if you can see that, but those instructions show that all four of those holes have identical cutouts and they don't. So we're working on a little idea here and I'll let you know how I get this uh, figured out on that top left one on this side and the top right one on that side. Okay, so we managed to get that one in uh, with the little trick that I tried. So let me show you how I did that. So if you remember, we've got the two holes at the bottom where the bolt slips in easy. The two at the top take some ingenuity. So the top right, I'm sorry, the top left is the toughest one. So I'm gonna pan the camera over here. So what I did was I just took some regular old wire and wrapped it around this bolt and I'm going to tape it on there to get a little bit better of a hold let's 
tape is really pliable today because it's getting warm outside. Doesn't have to be pretty. We just need to snake this bolt through the back. So then I've got my hanger. I looped one end. So then I'm gonna put it in this hole. Push it through till I can reach it on the other side. Put it in there. Twist it around a few times. And then we're just gonna gently pull it back through. And I'm gonna have to guide it because I don't want to drop it down in there because there's no access in these bolts from the front. See, and drop it in there. I'm just going to try to get it to come up. You can see it's coming out there. A pair of pliers. So I pull too hard, I'll pull that wire right off. Side when I get the tape off, and I have to put this washer on here. They tell you on the others, or all of them actually, to brace it from the back and push this on with a socket. Well, it's almost impossible to reach back there on this one. And that's how we did it. And this is what this process is supposed to look like had all of those holes been the same. Slide the bolt in. Sorry for my hand in the way. You turn that and it comes, you know, right there for you instead of making that contraption. And I can just reach my finger back on this one. Kind of get it started. And that's it. So we'll tighten those up and get the other two in, but just want to let you guys know that uh, this particular bumper, I think they forgot to stamp those other four holes uh, but we got it figured out and i also should have taken my son up on uh, the opportunity for him to move his project car out of the garage so uh, i would be in the shade but you know silly me <laughs> all right you guys i'm still under the jeep uh we're about wrapping this thing up but uh these instructions kind of ridiculous and they don't really tell you uh, what parts go for which Jeep. They do give you two separate uh, instruction booklets, one for a JK and one for a JL. Uh, but of course I separated that one so I'm not even looking at that. And that's for the, I've got the JL. And these brackets and this bracket and these instructions Trash. don't tell you. <laughs> Don't tell you what you're going to need it for once you install it at the bottom of this frame horn. Let me show you. There's the frame horn. The bottom of it anyway. It talks about putting this up in there. But once you put it in there, it doesn't tell you what to do with it after that. So I'm not going to use that because the bumper is on and it's secure. So I'm guessing that maybe... If I get the 
worn skid plate that goes with all of this, then I might be able to need it. So at this point, we're done under here. We'll hook up the fog lights and then go on to the winch plate and put that winch plate on. All right, you guys, the bumper is installed. We're about ready to move on to installing the winch. We just have the uh, winch plate just sitting there for now, but everything's ready to go. Winch next. All right, you guys, winch is mounted. Only thing left to do now, run the wires, hook up the fog lights, tuck those wires, zip tie, close everything up. One of the things I, uh, I noticed when uh, putting the winch on, one of the things I noticed when putting on the winch is that these bolts, there's four of them, the washer that I'm supposed to use, when you use the washer and the lock washer, the bolt doesn't reach the nut mounted inside of the base of the winch. There's another set of bolts available in case I was mounting it uh, in a different manner. Those ended up being a little too long. So the only thing I could do was not use the lock washer or not use the uh, standard washer and use the lock washer only. So at some point, maybe I might uh, go find a set of bolts that are just uh, maybe a quarter inch longer, then I could use the washer. But for now, she's on there. Shouldn't cause any issues uh, for use because uh, she's locked down tight and it is torqued to 35 foot pounds. See you in a bit. Okay, got the line all prepped and zip tied together to keep it neat. We're gonna find a spot to snake it through right on the other side here. And uh, I'm just gonna use a hanger from the top side and we'll get it pulled through. All right, all buttoned up underneath, fog lights hooked up. Zip tied the uh, excess wiring so it's nice and secure. All right, it's all wired. All right, as you can see, after all of these upgrades I've made, it came down to a step stool. I needed to get on a step stool to be able to see over into the engine bay to run those wires properly. But she's done. So another thing I noticed is that since this is here, I've got to really reach. So that'll be something new. Maybe a few less slices of pizza or something will make it a little easier for me. She's working. She's gonna her in. I'll get her hooked up there in a nice secure place, but a lot of winches don't come with the uh, uh, line already installed, so that was there. Uh, so that was a, a nice touch, but overall, I'm really pleased with it. Um, this is a uh, worn VR Evo 12S, so I should have plenty of pulling power if I ever get myself stuck or anybody else that I'm not wheeling with. So, hey guys, if you like what you're seeing, Click and subscribe, tell your friends about me, and we'll see what we can get into next. See you next time.